I am in Iowa, the Mississippi River, in a town that is the birthplace to the Wild West's most famous showman. Cause these are main streets. Something about a hometown speaks to me. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. The heart and soul of communities right here. On these main streets. I am on Main Street in downtown LeClaire. And in LeClaire, Main Street is known as Cody Road, which is so perfect because this is the birthplace of the uh, Wild West showman, Buffalo Bill Cody. LeClaire is your classic Mississippi River port with its boom that happened in the middle of the 19th century. All of those old, beautiful river pilot homes still stand, which is a real testament to the fact that this town needed river pilots. Why? Because this is where the Mississippi River took a sharp turn to the west, and it sat on the head of the rapids, where the Sauk and the Meskwaki tribes had a term for it, a term that meant agitated waters. So LeClaire is uh, 15 minutes northeast of the Quad Cities. And since it's so close, this is like a bedroom community. People consider this a suburb of the Quad Cities. It has a population of 4,000 people. And um, when you think of classic Americana river community, LeClaire. We're at the Buffalo Bill Museum in LeClaire, and you're the board president. Yes. Well, that's only because nobody else wants <laughs> right? it. No. And of course, they named it Buffalo Bill Museum because it's the only famous person they knew that we had. Look who's here. How are you, Buffalo Bill? <laughs> it's good to see great, you. Man. This is the Buffalo Bill Museum. Who'd you think was gonna be greeting you at the door? People need to know this. It's not limited to Buffalo Bill. We're standing in front of the Lone Star. We're not sure, but we think it's probably the last remaining wooden hold steamboat in the United States, which is still intact. And so when you go back in there, it's like going in a time machine back to 1890. They need a new fridge, but other yeah, than yeah, that, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if somebody called and said, we're coming, what, what, what do you tell them? Well, I'll tell them they, that they will see enough so that they will think it's well worth what we charge. There's something for everybody. So we have cradle boards up here from just about every major tribe. James J. Ryan II, yes. inventor. He's LeClaire native. So he invented the flight recorder? He invented the flight recorder, and then Dr. Ryan also invented seat belts. The one thing that I want people to realize is that from the old world that Buffalo Bill grew up in, mm -hmm. till the time of his death in 1917, he brought that image of the West forward with him. Without all of this on, do people still say, do you know who you look like? <laughs> yes, they do. do they? <laughs> I wished I had known I would have worn something different. Wardrobe! This is the side wall of Pilo's Sundries. It's a coffee shop. Now, they used to have a, um, a cafe across the way. And what people used to do, they used to drive up and stand on their cars so that they could carve their name onto the wall of Pilo's. So I brought my own pen. Okay, it's a tool. I'm carving my name right here. I'm on the wall of Pilos. I can't be the only John, can I? Oh, John. We're in a beautiful home that is now a great restaurant. It's called the Crane and Pelican. So Mandy, how did this happen for you? Uh, well, in 2009, this building had been sitting empty for about five years. And so it was just an opportunity. It was too good to pass up. Everything that we did to the building was to take it back to its original charm and character. It's a river pilot house. It is a river built, built in 1851. It's on the National Historic Registry. Right when you walk in, you know, I feel like it takes you back, you know, and the, what the kind of food that we're trying to do is the from scratch food, those nostalgic throwback dishes. Yeah. That is definitely our Ballywick. You know, we really do use my mom's meatloaf recipe. Here's the really kicker is that I always hated my mom's meatloaf oh, as a kid. No. I, when mom said she was serving meatloaf, I was like, oh no. But you know, it, my customers love it. 
I think of LeClaire as one big team and every one of us has our own visions and we all work our tails off. I believe in everybody downtown and you know, I like I carry the wineries wine, I carry the distilleries products so that the whole community is a product that we deliver together, you know. Ashley, these guys want to see me make something. So lobster. you decided to make what? Lobster mac and cheese. So we start out sauteing a little bit of our lobster. That's a bit of lobster. Yeah, we don't mess around. I thought I knew it all <laughs> when we open. And then let me tell you one thing about owning a restaurant is you learn really quickly, you don't know it all. <laughs> it is uh. a business where you have to constantly be adjusting to trends and patterns. and But that's what's fun. If you did the same thing every day, yeah. we'd all be bored to death, right? All right, so we're going to just take it from here, put it in our crock. Just to get that little crispy. There we go, perfect. Order up lobster mac and cheese. I know where to deliver it. To my car. I love the fact that you're never too old to learn. Here's what I learned today. See that chip? It's pushing that barge really close to the shore here on the Iowa side. You know why? It's because there is a deep channel on the Iowa side of the Mississippi River. On the Illinois side of the river, it's shallow and muddy. So that ship is waiting its turn to make its way in this deep channel around the bend of the Mississippi River. Never too old to learn. So we're on the Mississippi, and look at this, Riverboat Twilight. It's a Mississippi Riverboat. You guys go up to Dubuque. Correct. And you spend the night in Dubuque. Correct. And what they talked about most is the food. Oh, good, <laughs> You do good. really, like the food's terrific, we right? We feed them about every two hours. <laughs> do you? We do, yeah. we do. My lord, it's elegant. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Look at this. So, so it's patterned after the old Victorian steamboats of the 1880s. So they drop their so mouth just like you did when you walked up here. I had That's no pretty idea. much, I had pretty no much idea. how it goes. And it's a two day overnight trip. So we leave here in the morning, we go up river. There's 42 bald eagles nests, there's entertainment on board. Has the business of what you do changed since you've had it? I think people expect more. It's more upscale, a little bit higher class is what we try to present. Right. Oh, yeah. Isn't that the ultimate this relaxation right there? Come on. I'm going to take a quick nap. You just... <laughs> <laughs> and the wheel is seven foot across. And you this have to have... This is not how you still... Yeah, this is how we steer it with this. You can pull that lever if you want right there. This one? Yeah, it's going to take two hands, but pull it all the way down. People don't realize that this strip going up through here, it just takes you away from reality. You know, you don't hear news, like all summer long. I don't hear the radio, I don't see TV, I don't see a newspaper. I learn the news Nothing. from the passengers. Are there surprises still? Every single day. I couldn't have a better job because I like it and I like the people that I meet. Is this second nature, what you're doing? Like, yeah, I, I, I think it is. I know I could parallel park this better than I could my pickup truck. <laughs> When you ride the boat, you come away from it, and you I probably can't describe it, but when people get off the boat, they've had an experience like no other that they can even think of, because it takes you back in time. In 1836, a man named Philip Souter arrived in town, and he became the first licensed rapids pilot. And many of his family followed, his three sons and his grandson, and the suitors had quite a connection with a very famous lawyer. Can you guess who that is? Remember when the American dream was being able to say, I made that, I built that. Wouldn't it be great if your kids and grandkids chose a career that provides that kind of pride with good pay, but without a ton of student loan debt? A four-year degree isn't the only path to success. We need talented people to make and build. Tell the young people you love that skilled work isn't a thing of the past. It's a bright future. Wisconsin's picture-perfect historic downtown Greendale isn't just a great backdrop for photos. It's the perfect place to make new friends, take a leisurely stroll, shop for treasure, and eat some really great food. Ask anyone who's made memories here, we'll all tell you the same thing. You just gotta see Greendale. 
Being diagnosed with breast cancer changes everything and it happens every single day. Very quickly, patients and caregivers realize this is not just a medical journey. They've been dragged onto an emotional roller coaster. ABCD trains breast cancer survivors who have ridden that same ride and provide encouragement and understanding like no one else can. From diagnosis through treatment and beyond, all services are free and virtual. In 1850s, there was big tension between uh, the riverboats and the railroads. You can imagine why it was all about who was going to get the work. And at one point, a riverboat crashed into a railroad bridge and a lawyer came to defend the railroads. Did you guess who that lawyer was? Abraham Lincoln. And guess who won? The railroads. Our next interview is at Grasshopper, which is really an old river pilot home that has been turned into a uh, gift shop on the first floor. And the people that own it, their home is on the second floor. And they bought the house next door, and that's a B&B. &B. So it's a big property, a gorgeous property, right on Main Street or Cody Road. They call this the cornerstone of downtown LeClaire. Sure. The building in itself, people want to come see it. We do everything. We pretty much do all the yard work, all the weeding, all the cleaning all the little displays. You ran and you owned all of the gift shops yes. until not long ago, right? Right, right. And now a friend of yours. A friend of mine. This is your shop. It is. It's it is. It's sizable. It is. I heard that you're an artist. You're a jewelry maker. I am, yep. And then I mixed in some clothing and some accessories to go along with it. When we bought the house, this barn did not have a roof. It did not have <laughs> one side of the Floor. It needed help. It needed a it lot needed of help. It needed repurpose. I know. <laughs> Is this table freehand? Yeah, I just, yes, that's freehand. See, you're an artist. Oh, okay. That's, what, that's how that works. <laughs> so this is the second floor of the barn. This was non-existent when we had small children because they used it as a playhouse. It's very cool. So a wine cellar. So this wasn't my image of what this was going to be like. OK. So this is like a wine store is what this is. And that's what we, we decided to make it. Over here is really neat. Those were old bake ovens back in the day. We're always thinking, what's the next thing we can do? And it went from this great project to <laughs> adding one guest house, adding a second guest house, and now adding more than likely two more. Guest house two, two. as well. It's a little smaller, but it's right downtown. We try to keep everything very similar to what it was in 1880. And do they feel like you're th their friend? Oh, yeah. I give them my cell number. Just call <laughs> me if you need anything. And it does happen. Like, do you have a pizza pan? So we'll run it over to them. It could be anything. We'll, we'll, we take care of them. You're a better person. <laughs> than you. <laughs> you really no, it's all good. <laughs> I thought we were going to slow down, and we actually have not slowed down at all. Down the street is a wine tasting room. Up the street is a brewery. In the middle of it all is Mississippi River Distilling Company. It was the first thing here. And do you know what they call this area? They call it Libations Lane. Like, this is awesome. Where else in the world can you go walk a block and a half and hit a winery, a distillery, and a brewery? So yeah. like, we got to get together on this. And so we came up with the name Libation Lane. You operate this with your brother? Yep. You know, we grew up in family business. My dad, his three brothers uh, ran a road construction company together. 11 years later, I feel like we've made it through the valley of death and we're still walking. So it's, it's all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we started in America, there were about 200 of these small distilleries 11 years ago. Yeah. Now there's over 2,500. So it's grown, wow. you know, that exponentially. All of our spirits are made from grain, sourced right from farmers who grow it, and it's all from 25 miles of where you're standing. But our main line is probably about a dozen products that we make all the time. Yeah. And we kind of try to mix it up a little bit, have a few new products a year, and then uh, also bring in some of the old favorites again. Are you ever surprised at what becomes really popular? Totally. What do we have? So our big one is, I told you, our Cody Road bourbon. Our bourbon is our, is our most popular product. This is our number one seller. We've got a few different versions of that. So this is my retirement. <laughs> this is about four years worth of barrels. There's about a thousand here waiting for the sun to come up every day. Our stuff doesn't taste like Kentucky whiskey because that's not what we're making. Right. We're making Iowa whiskey, so uh, yeah. we like that. Can you talk about what LeClaire means to you guys? It's a town that you come here for one thing, but you don't leave without taking the lap, right? Isn't that great? If you come to the Quad Cities and you don't make it to LeClaire, you missed the best part. And the things that we have here, the, you can find those other places, sure, but you won't find those people, you yeah. won't find those smiles, and you won't leave 
feeling like you leave, do when you leave LeClaire. Yeah. And that keeps people coming back. Okay, we're done. <laughs> That's all we need. <laughs> LeClaire is very close to the Quad Cities. Did you know the Quad Cities used to be called the Tri-Cities when it was three communities? Now it's five communities and it's still called the Quad Cities. Can you name the five Quad Cities? No Googling. Come on. they're all wearing shorts. It is snowing in LeClaire right now. <laughs> and this is how it's going to be all week. You see what they're doing? Those Look poor at, guys yeah, have loaded I'm, up. I'm going to go get a cup of coffee and have a seat in the van. <laughs> He's been waiting for this since I said we were going to do LeClaire. Who is it? We're talking to Emily, who's the uh, general manager here. It's very exciting. Yeah. Yay. That's not Emily, that's Bob. Hey, Bob. <laughs> LeClaire was great. I can't wait to get to my own bed, though. Is that rude to say? No, but you know what? I can tell you got some sun. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> We, we had we had some sun, Gail, didn't we? you got sun too. Yeah. <laughs> on your we, nose. We got here, it was 93, today it's 53. And it's rain. Good. Yeah. We've seen it all in LeClaire. On this episode of John McGivern's Main Streets, that flavor. That flavor. No, what is a flavor? Tell me. Love. Love. Yeah. Bell's is a brewery. It's a pub. It's a restaurant. I used to study here. <laughs> We're the largest car museum in North America. Yeah, I call this my happy place. It could be a lot of people's happy place. The Tomato fashion show. Whoa. That'll come next. <laughs> Decepticons, the moped army here in Kalamazoo. Oh, the open road. The five quad cities. Davenport, Bettendorf, Moline, East Moline, and Rock Island. Those are the five quad cities. You'd think they call them the Quint cities, which means five. Or Ad Leclerc could be the sex city. No, 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 wait. It, there's five quad cities. We'll leave it at that. I am sitting on the monument to the Green Tree Hotel. So you're thinking, oh, there was a hotel sitting right on the Mississippi River here in Leclerc. Here's the story. Back in the late 1800s, there stood a huge, big, beautiful elm tree that gave shade. Shade to the, um, to, to the pilots, to the, to the boat pilots. Sometimes they'd have a little too much to drink and sleep underneath the shade of that tree. And they started calling it the Green Tree Hotel. Back in 1964, they tore it down because of Dutch elm disease. There it is. Makes me want to take a nap. A tree would be nice. Ew. Art. This is Matt Taney. We are talking Tugfest today, aren't we? Yep, Tugfest. So people are like, what? Tugfest? Tugfest uh, is a uh, tug of war across Mississippi that started way back in 1987. It stretched a rope across the river, just went after it. The day of, it's 20 people per team for the men's team, and then the women's team is 25 women. Well, and it's, it's all about Working together as a team. This year, we're back on schedule. You know, it starts Thursday night with family night. We have carnival rides down here. The kids come down and go on the carnival rides all night. And then Friday, we have a big parade. Yeah. It goes right down through the center of town. And then probably one of the best fireworks show Friday night as well. The town is a great town. It has a lot of activities, but the biggest one ever is Tugfest. When should we come back to see this? When, when, so Tugfest always year? happens the second weekend of August. What's the outcome usually? Well, everyone wins. You, you walk off the robe, you're a winner. Yeah. Thanks, Matt. Yep, thank Good you. Job. Big. Beautiful room. Thank Great you. restaurant. Yeah, thank you. I started washing dishes here in 2000 and grew up around here and uh, went away to culinary school after that. Came back and actually bought the restaurant. So about 11 years now. 
That's like a movie story. It's, is that really true? Cool. It is, I know. <laughs> was a goal to get home? It definitely was on my mind, absolutely. So to be a chef is one thing, to be a chef owner is really a whole is, other kind of It is. The chefs don't really care to do paperwork, you know, and <laughs> you're kind of forced into that. Isn't it like guys like you that set trends? Try. The last probably six years has, has been our transition from being white linen tablecloth fine dining to something more casual. We've really expanded our wine program, live music that the restaurant didn't have, you know, six, seven years ago. But we've really developed the restaurant into a really strong meat and cheese program and, mm -hmm. and sharing small plates. Uh, Menu-wise, is there stuff that stays so, on the menu for sure? There's one item that stays, and that's the truffle fries. I might be hung out to drive if I got rid of truffle fries. Is that right? Like, what, what's sure. your relationship with LeClaire? You know, I love this town. I, I grew up here. I've seen this town grow. You know, Faithful Pilot is LeClaire. I am on the balcony of my very well-appointed hotel room here at the Holiday Inn Express in LeClaire. And I have an incredible view of the mighty Mississippi and a view of the I-80 bridge from Illinois to Iowa. This is such a great story. <laughs> it is an amazing story. The river is our true celebration. Yeah. I mean, the Mississippi River is is iconic. Yeah. And if you add a bison bridge to that, it'd be neat. Go back again. Okay. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bison. <laughs> No. There's going to need to be a new I-80 bridge. Okay. So the Illinois DOT is working on, you know, establishing where that new bridge line should be. You just use the old bridge. It's a perfect design and architecture to yeah. repurpose and make it a pedestrian and bicycle bridge. But to have the bison on the other side grazing all through, and then humans will be traveling eastbound. Now the end game is to be a national park. There aren't any in Iowa right now. Right. So it'd be amazing. Where do you get the bison? That no. <laughs> I think it's like Bison Marketplace. You find it. <laughs> that is lock 14 in a series of locks that go from uh, St. Louis, Missouri, all the way up to St. Paul, Minnesota. There's 27 locks and two dams, just so you know, on the upper Mississippi River. Cameraman Jason, how long does it take to get through the lock? About two hours. And does the entire barge make its way through the lock? It's too long. They have to do it in pieces. They have to do it in pieces. It takes two hours. Thanks, cameraman Jason. See. It's a team effort here, John McGivers Main Streets. Every community owes a debt of gratitude to its veterans. We join the people of LeClaire honoring and remembering all of those who served. Have you ever been to that place? That place where there's always something new to see? where there's always something new to learn? That place with so much beauty that it fills you up with joy. That place that speaks your mind and your heart, where inspiration feeds your soul, and where the wonder of the natural world is always growing. Ryman Gardens at Iowa State University. This is that place. John McGivern's Main Streets would not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors for believing in our mission and committing to supporting our upper Midwest communities. Thank you so much, sponsors. So you want to know the news in LeClaire? I think this guy might know. You know there's more, a lot more, at MainStreets.tv. Because when you work with John McGivern, you can't really fit him into half an hour. <laughs> Find me on social media or go to our website. This is gonna be fun. I'm excited. Antique Archaeology. You know, American Pickers. This is their campus. People make this a destination to come to LeClaire. Every single day. Yeah. And from all over the world. Yeah, we're in the Mecca of junk. And how long has your shop been open? So we have been here in LeClaire, I think since about 2008 is when okay. he bought this building. Um, and now we've exploded out of it. So we have another building and we have our store in Nashville. Every customer that comes in is always like, where's all the stuff at? <laughs> we see such a high turnover at this point. We're just not your typical antique store anymore. Yeah. With the amount of traffic that we get in, things live about two weeks here tops and then they go. A lot of the shop is new items that were just picked like this Coca-Cola machine. Wanna haggle a little? <laughs> this is what yeah. I want right now. Talk to me. Talk to me. Wouldn't you want to talk to her? And I do you think love she, her. like, who is she? A nickel, a dime, or a quarter. 
She's really nice for a corner. <laughs> <laughs> and you did a good job on this. This was all Mike's brainchild. LeClaire has so much architecture with brick that Mike knew he wanted it to it have to that, yes, to complement our town. On any given day, how many people show up here? On a good weekend, like let's say a Saturday in the summer, I mean, we're seeing probably three to 500 people. You are, which really helps the rest of LeClaire, doesn't it? So we are pushing all of our traffic as much as possible down to our downtown. And I always like to say that I think we bring people here, but this town makes them come back. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the new shop. This is the probably the most asked item is uh, the old rusty Indian that Mike dug up out of the ground. Wow. So this came in from a customer. It literally has oh. 150 stops of oh. Chicago. Good job. This stuff looks great. What I love about it is to reimagine these pieces in your home is so fun. Colonial bread. See, that would look good in my house right there. Couldn't sleep near that, though, just so you know. So, and that's what's so cool about here. We are a museum, you know, curators. We are advocates for small town LeClaire and the American Pickers. <gasps> oh. I love showing up in town and finding a coffee shop. LeClaire, Cody Road Coffee. Yep. Colonel Cody's Popcorn Shop? Yeah. The LeClaire mix? Well, you better. And the shameless chocoholic. Their turtles are called Schmirtles. It's fine with me. Let's talk about LeClaire and your relationship to it. How do you know LeClaire? How do I know LeClaire? Yeah. Well, I live here, for one thing. Grew up in Iowa and been involved with the chamber and tourism for about 26 years, so. Um, have you seen a lot of change in tourism in, in LeClaire in those, in those years? Yes, absolutely. It was in the early 2000s that we started doing more revitalization of our downtown. Mm -hmm. Our birthplace of Buffalo Bill kind of put us on the map a sure. long time ago. If somebody came into your office, what would you make sure that they wouldn't miss? Well, we always ask them if they've been to antique archeology span because you go home and say you were in Leclerc, they're gonna say, <laughs> did you go to antique archeology? span right. And then of course, they wanna know how to get on the river. Where's the museum and about our restaurants and our great lodging, including our guest houses. Come on in. So we have some brochures This is called here. information. Yes, you know yeah. That. What else should I know about this town? Just that it's a great place to work, live in and visit, and we would love to have people come check us out. LeClaire, Iowa. This hometown's Main Street speaks to me. There's no one else I'd rather be the heart and soul of communities. How do I look so fun? Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm sure you're going to cut some of this stuff out. Trust me. That's probably not something we want to put on there. No, yet. probably not. <laughs> this one just doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> it's just how I look. I know. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> thank you. I look sharp at the end. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>